Apple II wire-by-wire build. Video clock build. I'm Dr. Matt Regan. I want to go over the circuit we designed in the last video. So here I have my Octal D-Type flip-flops, which I'm going to clock at 14 MHz. And now I have a 4-bit adder. I feed the output of the flip-flops back into the adder in the B inputs. And I connect the output of the adder up to the input of the flip-flops. For the other input to the adder, I'm going to set all the lines to zero except one. I'll connect up this other line in a moment. I'll make carry in high so it always counts up by at least one. And now I have these AND gates which detect 13. I'm going to send that into a flip flop and then feed the output back into the second bit of the A input of the adder. And from this, we can derive all the important clocks we need character clock, dot clock, and our color burst reference clock. I'm going back to the schematic diagram for the Apple II build, and the first thing I'm going to do is add all the chips I need for this part of the circuit. First, I'm going to add the shift register for pixel output, and I'll add in a 374 octal D type flip flop like I did in a previous video. All of the chips need a 100 nanofarad decoupling capacitor, and I'll make one of these be electrolytic. Now, another octal D type flip flop and a 283 adder. These form the heart of the clock circuit. I'm also going to need some other logic chips. A 74HCO4, which is a hex inverter, and a 74HCO8. And finally, I need my 14.318 MHz crystal oscillator. That's power and ground done. It's not my favorite part of the build, but it's important to get it right, so I like to do it early while I'm still concentrating. Now I'm going to connect up the outputs from the flip flops to the inputs of the adder, and then the output of the adder goes to the inputs of the flip flops. This forms the finite state machine. I connect the add to line up to the second bit of the A input to the adder, and the other bits of the A input I just tie to ground. I use these AND gates to detect when the output's 13, and this becomes the input to the ADD2 flip-flop. 
Now at this stage, note that I haven't wired in the wide character signal yet. This was an early design and I was still experimenting at this stage. As well as feeding back to the adder, the output of the flip-flops also form our various clock signals. And because they're all clocked by the same 14 MHz signal, they all should be tightly in phase. Now this part of the circuit I'll actually discard later, but it was used to generate a load signal, which is required by the serial shift register. This circuit should detect the value of 6 coming out of the adder. Now it will also detect the value of 14, but the way I've wired it up so far, this finite state machine will never get to 14. Alright, let's build this and see how we go. I want to wire in the serial shift register. The inputs to the octal D-type flip-flops connect directly to the data bus. I'm going to use the global CPU clock to latch the values into the flip-flops. Then the output of the flip-flops connect to the shift register. Oops, there's a mistake. I need to move the upper bits of this address signal.
One of the advantages to building a circuit using this technology is that if you change your mind, you can just rip it up and start again. This connection between the D-type flip-flops and the shift registers is actually just temporary. Eventually, I want to put in the character generator ROM between the two. But for now, I just want to get the circuit working with Pac-Man. I've also decided to change the way I'm going to generate the load signal. I can rip up this part of the circuit that detects 6. I'm going to use one of the AND gates I've just freed up to wire in the wide character bar signal I need. And what I'm going to do is invert the ADD2 signal, then fit it back through the flip-flops. The output of the flip-flop will be my new shift register load signal. It should be low when counts at 0 and only 0. And this is when the data will be moved into the shift register. Previously, I said I was going to use the top three video address signals to generate signals like sync and active and color burst. Instead, I'm going to grab all upper eight bits of the video address. The top three bits I'm going to feed into a 138 demultiplexer as I've shown before, but later I'm going to want to grab V10 through V12 to feed into our character generator EEPROM.
Next video, I'm going to bring up the clock circuit, and I may even get a video signal. But for now, like, share, and subscribe.